no puedes Encontrarte a otro que te quite El dolor que mi amor te dejo Y te haga sentir mejor No, disculpa, ya no quiero que sufras No tienes la culpa No llores más por mí Alright everybody, how you doing? I hope you're having an amazing day. Let's see who's here. Let's see who's in the chat. Lolly, what's up Lolly? How you doing? Pilar is back. Hey Pilar, long time no chat. Lovely Leffler, good afternoon. Gertie is in the house. What's up Gertie? Gertie's got all kinds of names. Gertie, Gertu, I'm sure she's got a few more. Ahmad, how you doing? Let me get in here. There we go. Here we are. We're all here. Whoa, whoa, Ken. Keep it educational here. Uh, Ahmad's here. Only human's back. What's up, only human? Uh, Michaeli, uh, how you doing? I'll be honest, guys. I, I haven't I haven't really gotten things together yet. I got a bit of a headache going on, so I'm gonna. I might be a little <laughs> slower than usual. Give me a sec. Maria, how you doing? Noir, how you doing? Who else we got in here? Uh, Gabriella's in the house. What's up, Gabriella? Ikram, how you doing from Algeria? Yeah, and if you're new to the chat, please drop us drop us a line. Where are you from? Tell us. That's always cool to know. We like international people. That's the way we do it. Uh, Hamad's here. Hello from Cancun. Hamad, what are you doing in Cancun? But working. You're 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 studying, man. You're studying. You should be in Cancun. You should be chilling on the beach or something like that. No. Uh, who else we got here? Kazewa's back. What's up, Kazewa? Uh, I don't know how to say your name, but. Vader? Vader? Are you Darth Vader? No, probably not. Sir Juan, how you doing? Uh, who else we got in here? Scroll, scroll. Uh, Imini's back. What's up, Imini? How you doing? Uh, Majed, hello, hello, hello. Sumaya, hello. Maya, what's up? Uh, Leon's back. Kedar, hello. Beatrice is in the house from Africa. Ooh, cool. Hello, Beatrice. How are you doing? Uh, who else? Judy's in the house. What's up, Judy? Uh, Suleiman, how you doing? Saima's back. What's up, Saima? And I think we're good. Now we're good to go. All right. So, uh, hello, Radislav. How you doing as well? Let me drop you a line. So today we're gonna today we're gonna work on your organization skills. So maybe the only question I can think of connected to this is how organized are you? See, all, that's all I got. It's not the best one. How organized are you? That's going to be the question of the day. Uh, give us your answer. I'll, I'll say that maybe you look at Kent and you think, hmm, Kent, I think you're probably not the most organized person in the world. But I'll be honest, I'm super organized. I Google Doc everything, very organized. I'll tell you a little secret about myself that nobody really knows. It's really geeky. 
sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I will take my shirts, like this is a black shirt, so I will put black and then another dark color, dark color, lighter, 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 and then white at the very end. Don't tell anybody, but that's, that's how organized I can be. All right, so if you're wondering if Kent has OCD, it's probably not true, but that particular part, sometimes I'm really organized. So tell me about you, how organized are you guys? Uh, give, us, give us your opinion on your organization skills. How organized are you? And let's see, let's see what you got to say. Very organized, yeah? And tell us how, give us a little example. I gave you a, a little secret about me that's just kind of weird, but so give us an example. How are you organized? Is it in your work? Is it in your home? Give us an example, how are you organized? No time, kiddo, no time to be organized. I don't know, everybody's always got time. I'm neat, not at all, pretty organized. Mm-hmm, what else? Yeah, Ikram's blown away, that's pretty geeky. That's, we call this geeky. Um, is it geeky, or is it just, yeah, anyways, it's weird, I agree. It's pretty weird behavior, by me. Anyone else pretty not organizing? And mix, some people are, some people aren't. Well, anyways, uh, there's a segue, and a segue is a connection between the lesson and uh, what we're talking about. Not organized, yeah. Yeah, try to use Marie Kondo's method, what's that? Marie Kondo method, okay, this is, uh, somebody's got my attention. A method for being organized, let's see what that is. I don't know what that would be. Marie Kondo method. Let's see. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. The KonMari method? Maybe? I don't know. Marie Kondo is a system of simplifying and organizing your home by getting rid of physical items that do not bring joy. <laughs> so if you have physical items that do not bring you joy, throw them away. Recycle them if possible. Throw them away um, because you... They are not bringing joy. So if you have a shirt and you're just like, I never wear this shirt, I don't even like this shirt, it's probably time to show, throw that shirt away. Fair enough. How can you answer? I don't know. You can, uh, you can answer however you want there, Kazewa. Only in work I'm organized. Okay, well that's a good place to be organized. Judy, I'm very organized. I'm a, a very organized person. Sometimes I get on my family's nerves. I got, yeah, I get on my family's nerves. Okay, so they get a little bit annoyed with you. Okay, that, that's fair. We have a very organized person at work and she sometimes gets angry because us teachers were a little bit lazy sometimes. Not me, I'm very organized, but the other bad teachers. And she gets kind of angry because people leave their dishes and stuff and she's super OCD. And she cleans up everything. She like puts check marks and they have to be inside the box. And I just go and she would hate that. She's like, no, you got to put the check mark in the box. So like, wow, that's another level. See, you thought I was weird. There are weirder people out there than me. Okay, so let's truly segue, and I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing today. So what we're going to be working on today is uh, some skills which are useful for writing in English, really good for writing in English, and also useful for speaking in English as well. So if any of you are doing, for example, a test in the future, these words will be very important to you. And we've done them before in the past, but now I'm going to uh, smash you with all of them at one time because it's good to see the big picture. It's good to see what am I supposed to do in my writing and in my speaking to make it more organized. So if you have bad organization skills, you might go screaming and crying away from this lesson. If you have good organization skills, you'll be like, ooh, good, this is probably useful for my writing. So let me share this document with you. So today we're going to look at, uh, there are linking words, and we've looked at linking words before, but today we're gonna look at all of them together and one time, and we're gonna answer some questions, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna look at some, some fun questions that you can answer as well. You can't hear me? You know what, I have a feeling that Julia is a quiet speaker. I'm a screamer. I'm always yelling. But if you can't hear me, let me adjust my microphone. Come here, little mic. And go over here, closer to my face. Boom! Boom! Pop! Is that better? All right, here we go. So let me share this document with you. If you are new to the chat, 
as someone always is. Please take this document and open it up because it will give you everything that we're going to work on today. So the document is in the chat. All you have to do is open it up and you will get all the wonderful stuff and you will see all the little animals like this little llama here or this narwhal scurrying in to join and grab this wonderful document so we can all and bat a bat is in there batman okay so this is what we're going to do today so i'm going to give you a few questions and i would like you to answer the question and as you'll notice i've underlined all the key words that i want you to learn today so don't forget about them but all you need to do really right now is answer a few questions so question number one is this uh, let's start with this one here great questions sounds okay good boom pop that's always a good way to test so number one is uh, how to be lazy so I would like you to finish three sentences for me so here's sentence number one number one is this well first of all you need to and sentence number two is second okay let's start with first of all and then second no let's just start with the first now we'll do them all at the same time second you should and finally you should <laughs> okay and I'm gonna choose I'm also gonna choose some of your ideas to complete my sentences so let's see so how to be lazy great question useful question well first of all you need to be an Australian let's see what lazy Australians look like lazy Australians let's see how lazy these people are is that an Australian that's an Australian. He doesn't look that lazy. He kind of looks organized. Anyone else lazy Australian? So you are lazy in Australian. No, okay. No, I'm not really feeling it here. Maybe. Oh, Hugh Jackman. He doesn't look lazy. He looks kind of fit, doesn't he? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe they are. But I agree. Australia is quite laid back, uh, especially compared to a place like Canada. Okay, so what's, what are the rules? Give us um, Give us some more. So first of all, you need to be an Australian. That could be a rule of being lazy. I'm sure there's other lazy people in the world, though. So what do we got? Uh, so first of all, you need to stop doing your tasks. Okay, Dar, stop doing your tasks at all. Okay, that's a good way. Stop wasting time. No, Maria, we want to be lazy. We want to be lazy today. We don't want to not be lazy. We want to be lazy. So first of all, you need to stop doing your tasks. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to add that one. So first of all, you need to stop doing your tasks. Okay, so that's rule number one. What else we got? You need to be a koala. Great. Great answer. Second, you should be an Australian koala. Let's combine those two answers together because Australians are lazy apparently and koalas are definitely lazy so let's put them together you should be an Australian koala that's rule number two and finally what is rule number three for being lazy there's three golden rules one you don't do your tasks number two you are an Australian koala and number three you grab some beers go to the beach drink beer stop getting up early oh man all of these are great answers which one shall i choose sometimes i have a hard time trying to move from side to side while i'm sleeping noir are you having sleeping problems is this about laziness uh oh good one nice one judy first of all you need to not listen to your urge to do something yeah that's really that's really the essence isn't it wow I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that one. That's really the essence of laziness. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry for whoever had this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it because really, I thought Judy really nailed it. You need to not listen to your inner urge, to your urge, listen to your urge to do something. Just turn it off. Your body says, oh, you should go to work. No, just turn that off. Or your body says, oh, you should exercise. Turn it off how to be lazy that's really the essence here and then I think number two very important is being an Australian koala that would be also very useful and number three finally it is a good idea to um, yeah I'm gonna go with those guys those guys had the answer drink beer and go to the beach yeah I'm gonna put both of those I think Lolly had it how do you go yeah I think you guys really nailed the what is the essence of being lazy drinking beer and going to the beach sounds like a great idea so 
As, as you can see, I'm kind of introducing a few words along the way. So I introduced, first of all, second, finally. So think about that. Those are linking words, and we're going to talk about them later. Let's try another question, shall we? Number two, question number two. Hmm. Uh, what things can you do if you visit my country? Now, everybody will have very different answers for this, but that's cool. Uh, don't worry about that cohesion skill part. You're not going to need that. So here's part one. Canada. Pretty easy. Well, one thing that you can do is visit the Rocky Mountains. And I don't know if you know the Rocky Mountains, but they are really beautiful. And I could go there every year, maybe every weekend. But it's a long drive. Let's take a look, shall we? Rocky Mountains. These are the Rockies. And they are literally that, uh, that awesome. This is Moraine Lake, I believe. So now let's find a bigger. Look at that. Boom. Who doesn't want to go there? Look at that. Woo, woo. That could be you, maybe up there. That's pretty awesome. Look at that. Boom. Rocky Mountains all over the place. That's amazing. Uh, what else we got here? Look at that. Oh, yeah. Glaciers and rocks and water. What's not to love? It's, it's amazing, right? It's really beautiful. So that's number one. So what, one thing you can do is go to the Rocky Mountains. If you come to Canada, what is the best thing you can do is go here. There's nothing better. I can't think of anything better than that. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful drive. It's a beautiful stay. The air is fresh. The air is cool. The water is so cold, but you know, whatever. Yeah, there you go. Or maybe sit, hang out with me. Yeah, come to Canada, hang out with Ken. Woo, woo. We'll go drink beer. Mm, mm. That's a great idea. Come hang out with me. Maybe we go to the Rockies together. That could be awesome too. So there we go. Um, another thing, what else can you do? So also, you should definitely drink Canadian beer. We have a really good variety of craft beer in Canada. And if you look at breweries, East Bend breweries, you can actually see there's a map, there's a big map, and we have quite a few, maybe not as much as some countries, like uh, Portland uh, in the USA, they have a lot, but that's all our breweries. Lolly, look, look Lolly, these are all the places you could go, they would be amazing, and they all have beer, and each place has like, I don't know, 12 beers, 10 beers? You would be drinking beer for days. Oh my God, see, there's so many wonderful things to do in Vancouver. So, let me stop. You tell me about your country. Tell me about your country. What is one thing that you can do? And also, you should definitely do this. So give us a few examples. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Yes, hello, hello Kelly, hello Hashim, how you doing? Canadian moonshine, yeah, there you go. Okay, so let's uh, no more about Canada. Now it's about you. You go ahead. So what are two things I can do if I visit your country? Well, one thing that you can do is blah, 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 blah. And also, you should definitely blah, 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 blah. Please tell me about your country and use those, those sentence ideas there. So go ahead. Ivan, are you talking about your country? And please tell us, where is your country? Um, Okay, so let me add, let me change. One thing that you can do in Let me add some information here. That you can do. Let's go do in. That's supposed to be what it is. So put your country name we do have great waterfalls, Niagara Falls. So one thing that you can do in your country name, Brazil, Colombia, France, Af Africa, your, uh, where in Africa are you from? You know, I don't know, but go ahead. So choose an, choose an answer. One thing that you can do in my country is what? Russia, ooh, there we go, cool. So give us an answer, what can you do in your country? I told you two answers, you give me two answers for yourself. Mm hmm there's not there's nothing nothing one word there's nothing interesting in your country Kedar where are you from can't be that bad uh, I'm from Peru okay so tell me so again I want you guys to use those two sentences and I want you to finish them here we go Lolly's on it one thing you can do in France is taste French cuisine and drink red wine yeah for sure that sounds good. French cuisine is good, and the French wine, ho, 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 ho. 
Super good. Uh, sorry. Anyway, so that's a good idea. Cool. And another thing. Well, travel a lot. Visiting old Damascus. Okay. Where's Damascus? Hala. Tell us your country. Don't forget to tell us your country name. Damascus. Old Damascus. Where is that? Syria. Uh huh. Okay. Interesting. Old Damascus. Nice. Okay. So it's an old district in Damascus. And there it is. Syria, right by Lebanon, Iraq. Yeah, right there. Okay. There we go. Cool. That would be okay. I would be interested in that. I'd like to go there. Satellite. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. Cool. Very nice. Anyone else? Mm hmm. Gabriella, I'm from Bolivia. I've always wanted to see the Uyuni Salt. Yeah, what is that in Bolivia? Uyuni Salt Flats, that's what it is. And these ones are really cool. People take really awesome photos, like this one. Look at that. So if you go to Bolivia, one thing, let me see, what did I say? One thing that you can do in Bolivia is visit the Uyuni Salt Flats, where people take a lot of really interesting photos, like that. And what else? This one's really great. Oh, that's really funny. No! <laughs> Don't cook us! That's really funny. These are great photos. Because I guess it's just all flat, so it makes really perfect photos. That's really funny. I like that one a lot. Uh, okay, cool. Nice option. What else? Uh, do, 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 do. Where, 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 did, where did I go? Now the answers are coming in. Uh, one thing that you can do is attend the many beautiful national parks around the U.S. Cool. That works. Okay. Igor is in the house. One thing you can do in Brazil is enjoy the stunning view on the island called, F I don't know how to say this, Fernando de la... I can't, I can't say it. Sorry, buddy. I tried. People always say this word to me, and I just cannot repeat it, but I know it's a beautiful island that you can do. Michele, uh, you can go to the most beautiful... Bre can't say it. Beautiful beaches in Brazil. Also, you should definitely eat typical northeastern food. I would like to do that, Michele. I would totally like to do that. I'd go to the Babylon legend from Iraq. Mm, okay. When you come to Morocco, one thing you can do is visit. No visiting, but one thing you can do is visit the Sahara Mountains uh, to see sunsets and sunrises. Ooh, that would be cool. Sahara, I gotta, now I gotta Google that. I'm curious. Sahara Mountain Sunset. That must be nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Look at, oh, look at those colors. Yeah, that would be awesome. Feeling that. I like that. Okay, cool. All good. Next one. Moving on. Question number three. I got a lot of stuff I got to get through today. I should I should be faster. Let's go. Let's pick it up, guys, quickly. Uh, next one, what is it like being you? Well, on the one hand, being me is pretty cool because I got some great jobs. I meet some cool people. Uh, and I have a lot of fun. <laughs> I have a lot of fun every day. So on the one hand, being me is pretty cool because of my jobs have a lot of fun and I meet cool people. On the other hand, being me is not so awesome because uh, being me is not so awesome because I sometimes lose my patience and that's not good. Uh, being me is sometimes not so awesome because I don't get to do everything I want to do. Like there's some things I want to do in life but I can't do them, so I would say most of the advantages, mostly it's pretty good to be me, but at the same time, there's some things that create some problems. So what about you? Sound delay, is the sound really slow? Is that what the problem is here? So tell me about you. What is it like being you? So let me put that into the chat. Number one. And you get two sides. You get to answer this in two different ways. You say, on the one hand, positive, good stuff. And then you say, on the other hand, bad stuff. Okay, so give us the good and bad of being you. On the one hand, being me is cool because blah, blah, blah. On the, one, on the other hand, being me is bad because blah, blah, blah. So give us both sides of the answer. 
So you need to you need to yeah, you need to show both sides. So what do you think? What is the answer here? Is is anyone else having problem with the YouTube stream? Is it really slow today? I feel like there's a bit of a delay between me and the chat, but who knows? I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah, being me is sometimes quite dangerous. Yeah, I can imagine that, Rodrigo. I imagine you get yourself into some some pretty uh, risky situations for sure. Okay, and on the other hand, what's the other side of it? So give us we try to give us both sides, the good and the bad, the good and the ugly. Anyone else? I feel like there's a delay here. Delay. So I'm just going to keep talking, and hopefully everyone will kick in, and there'll be lots of sentences coming up in two seconds after you get them all. Hmm. <laughs> Anyone else waiting? There must be a delay. Contrast, yes, exactly, Gertie. This is what we're doing. We're, we're really looking at all the linking words today that we use in writing, and we're going to try to put them all together after. What else we got here? On the one hand, being me is self-critical. On the other hand, being me is optimistic. Hmm. Okay, so a little bit of self-criticism, but on the other hand, you are quite optimistic. There we go, so a little bit of contrast there. Hello, Cristiano. Come on in. We are talking about ourselves, the good and bad about ourselves. Good on my end? No, good, all right. Seems to be no like, that's good. YouTube continues. On the one hand, being me is relaxing because I do what I like slowly. Okay, so you take your time. That's cool, uh, Leon. That's a, that's a cool way to be. Slow, easy as you go. Judy, well, on the one hand, being me is good because I have a good sense of humor. Always, always important. Uh, Lolly, on the other, on the one hand, being me is cool and interesting, with a good temper. Being me is cool and interesting. Maybe no good temper, just cool and interesting. Finished. New sentence. On the other hand, being me is difficult. It is difficult to live with me. So don't say being me. Just say it is difficult to live with me. I drink too much beer. Well, I wouldn't have a problem with that, Lolly. I would probably support and enable. Your, your alcohol problem. Uh, noir, Noir, I w I'm an extrovert person, but it sometimes puts me in uh, embarrassing positions. Mmm, interesting. I wonder, wha I wonder what Noir does that puts her in an embarrassing spot. Uh, Igor, well, on the one hand, being me is awesome because I'm very friendly, helpful, and have a great family. Nice. On the other hand, being me is terrible because I can't drink beer every day. Sorry. Don't apologize. You're not alone, Igor. The one, the good one side, the one good side is having a good time hanging out with my mates or the mates of mine and having heaps of beer. That does sound pretty cool. All right. Boom. Very nice. Moving on. Next one. We're going to skip number four because it's the same thing as number, it's the same purpose as number three. So let's go here. Number five. Let's try this one. Number five says, what are some good ways to get in shape? So here we go, let's have a few answers here. If you want to get in shape, you can play some sports, such as, and also you can do some other physical activities like, so you got two sentences that you can use here, uh, talking about getting in shape. So how do you get in shape? Uh, Michele is still on the last one. I think being me is a bit tiring. Uh, so being you, the activity is tiring because I prefer staying at home watching Netflix over hanging out with friends. On the other hand, being me is cool because I know good people. Cool. Very nice. Nice, Michaeli. All right. How about the next one? Next one, number five. What are some ways to get in shape? If you want to get in shape, you can play some sports such as hockey, the great Canadian sport. Very good for getting in shape. And ultimate frisbee. Do you know ultimate frisbee? If you want to get in shape, I think you should play this game. You will... You will run a lot. So this is ultimate frisbee. So basically you play with this thing. You know that thing you see lazy people throwing around? Some people actually play pretty f professionally. And they're good at it. And it's really fun. And anyone can play pretty quickly. Uh, so there you go. I don't think you're supposed to kick people in ultimate frisbee. But that kid's doing it. It's a really cool game. But if you want to get in shape, you will get in shape. Because it's you're always running. Because if you don't run, nothing happens in the game. So there you go. Ultimate Frisbee, best way. Also, you can do some other physical activities like hiking, swimming, maybe some more. What do you guys think? Um, let's see here. Maria's got one from before. Well, on the one hand, being me is 
being is losing patience. Well, on the one hand, being me is difficult because I lose my patience. On the other hand, being me is. Uh, nah, Maria, you need one good and you need one bad, and you just had <laughs> bad, bad. So don't get down on yourself. Be positive. You, there's good about everybody, there's bad about everybody. That's a phrase, shape, very meaning two things. Mm, I don't think so. I think get in shape means become healthier, better condition. Eat healthy and walk. If you want to get in shape, you can play some sports such as swimming. Swimming is, is it a sport or is it an activity? Is it a physical activity? So I think w usually we have games like games are soccer and hockey and football and these kinds of things. Um, but physical activity would be swimming unless it's a competition. So that's, I guess it's a sport. It's a competition, it's a kind of sport. Anyways, but I would digress. Uh, do, 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 do. If you want to get in shape, you can play some sports such as basketball. Also, you can do some other physical activities like jogging, going to the gym. Great advice. Good. Okay, uh, good, good. All right, very nice. I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit because I'm trying to get through quite a bit of stuff before the end of class. So let's go here. Let's try this one out. Number six. Uh, what are some good countries to study English in overseas? And I'll go back and I'll finish some of your other, other sentences because they're still coming in. Uh, if you want to get in shape, you can play some sports such as tennis. Oh, sorry. Let me. I'm all over the place today. Let me give you the sentences for the next one as well. Okay, I'm going to go back and do the other ones. You guys start the new ones. If you want to get in shape, you can play some sports such as tennis, yeah, riding a bike, cycling, playing rugby, dancing, climbing, jogging. All of those are good. Any physical activity would get me ripped, but what is crucial is stopping eating at night. Okay, there you go. Uh, Ahmed, jogging is the best way to get in shape. Also, you can also do some other physical activities such as push-ups and pull-ups. Yeah, there you go. Get into the gym. Get the gym bod. Get rid of the dad bod and get the gym bod. Do you know what a dad bod is? So in America, of course, these bodies, these types of bodies are kind of popular. So see this guy here? See Leonardo DiCaprio? You see how he's not really, really like super ripped? He's not in shape. He's kind of got a dad's body. And that's like apparently cool in the United States. So it's cool to be a little bit lazy. Don't work too hard. Let's see who else has a dad bod. Vince Vaughn, you know that guy? He's got a dad bod. And everybody thinks it's kind of cool because you don't work, you don't try too hard to be cool. You're a little bit lazy. That means you kind of like to party. You're a, fun, you're a fun guy. So what do you think? Are dad bods the new thing? Should everybody have a dad bod? These guys all have dad bods, right? They're kind of like a little bit lazy going on. So there you go, dad bods, now you know. Popular, everybody go out and get a dad bod. All right, next one. The next one was about studying overseas. So the question is, uh, what are some good countries to study English in overseas? One great choice is Canada because, because why is Canada good? Well, I heard the students say that the price is good. So because it's cheap. So if you want to come to Canada, one great choice is Canada because it's cheaper than, for example, maybe the United States, definitely cheaper than England, probably cheaper than Australia, New Zealand, I'm not sure. But alternatively, Australia is a great choice because it has amazing everything, amazing weather, uh, pretty good money if you work there, which is great as well. So I'd say alternatively, Australia is a great choice because it has so many things to do and a good lifestyle and really and koalas and it's also got koalas so that could be cool as well so what do you guys think uh, what did you have you ever studied abroad before did you choose Canada why did you choose Canada or did you choose America why did you choose America uh, let's see here United Kingdom Australia Ireland it depends on the accent you want to learn yeah it does it depends what how you want to sound uh, don't say Australia have you just learned have you here you just learned how to be how to be a lazy one. Yeah. Well, it's okay. I don't mind. I don't mind being a little bit lazy. I'm cool with that. One great choice is Vancouver because we have someone we have known some smart English teachers who are devoted teachers. Very nice. That could be a great choice. McKaylee, I think Canada, USA and 
the UK, the UK are good countries to learn English. Igor, one great choice is definitely Canada because it's a multicultural country. That's true. Alternatively, Ireland is also a great choice because you have the chance to know other countries easily. Yeah, to uh, learn about or travel to other countries easily, right? Because it's so close. Uh, Ireland is uh, Ireland is Ireland to get possibility no English? Mm, probably yes. And last one, uh, one great dance is Brazil. Dance? Why dance? Alternatively, California is also a great choice for because of its varieties of culture. Mm, okay, there we go. Very nice. Almost there. Let's see here. Hmm. Yeah, this is a good one. Let's try this one. Number seven. What are some reasons that you need a holiday? <sighs> Don't get me started. So, one reason is because, and another reason is because, so pretty straightforward, I'm just using because, because in these sentences. <sighs> okay, where should I start? I, I, I could talk about this one for a while. One reason that I need a holiday is because I haven't taken a proper holiday for two years because I bought a property in Vancouver, which is expensive. So that's one reason. So I need a vacation because I haven't taken one in two years and I like taking regular vacations, so it makes me crazy. Another reason is because I like to see new things. I like to experience new places, new foods, meet new people. I don't want to just see the same thing every day, every day. I need change. Kent needs change. So those are two good reasons why you need a holiday or a vacation. Um, yeah, I guess you're right, Rodrigo. Probably vacation would be a better word than holiday because holiday just might be one day, right? Uh, so let's say a vacation. Let's change it to vacation. What, what are two reasons that you need a vacation? Uh, my life is an open holiday without money. <laughs> oh, no, why? that's great and bad at the same time. So you, you basically have a vacation every day, so it's great and horrible at the same time. I understand that vacation every day is not vacation every day. Eventually it becomes you need to do something. Totally agree. But tell me about yourself. Tell me, do you need a vacation? And give me two reasons why. And you can use because, because in both sentences. So go ahead. Gaurav says uh, to get, so I need a vacation because I want to relax. Don't say get relaxed. You can, I think you can just say I want to relax, and that's good. Uh, Faiza, because I need to recharge myself so when I get back to work, I will be more productive. Oh, that's a very nice answer. Ahmed, because sometimes I need to vent my stress. Yeah, no off, just vent my stress. Sounds good. Uh, Sid Smiley, uh, probably not Smiley. One reason is because, no two, because I want to spend time with loved ones. Another reason is because I want to visit unknown places on Earth. Yes, there we go. Uh, unknown, maybe not unknown, but uh, unfamiliar or new places on Earth. Uh, Igor, one reason is because we have the opportunity to celebrate the event with friends. Okay, he's doing a different sentence. In addition, you can rest and recover your energy to be more productive. Okay, cool. Uh, one reason is because we need to relax from the everyday back-breaking routine. Oh my God, Judy, is it that bad? Is it horrible? A backbreaking routine it sounds tough, Michele. Because uh, I need to relax after studying with a Y, studying like crazy, no a crazy, just like crazy. New sentence, another. Don't use a comma. Uh, I know Brazilians like to use commas, 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 but in English we usually use periods. Another reason is because I need to do things that I like instead of homework. Fair enough. Okay. And I think uh, I'm just going to go to the, I'm going to skip number eight because, right, well, yeah, that's a good one, but it's okay. We're going to skip it. Uh, last one, number nine. Let's do this one. So I'm going to put this in two parts. 
number nine. And this is really my personal opinion. So let's put that in there. Number nine. Why should, oops, why should people, and that should say, why should people? Why should people be nice to everyone, regardless of their color, gender, ethnicity, nationality, or sexual identity? Why? And personally, I believe that, and also from many people's point of view. Now, I'm going to give my answer here for this, because, yeah, why not? So personally, I believe that if you, I've said this before, personally, I believe that if you don't like someone in the world because of their, you know, color or gender, or ethnicity or nationality or sexual identity the reason you don't like that person is because you've never you don't like their personality it's not because you don't like something they do who cares the main reason that people usually connect to each other is personality so if you think oh those people are s I don't like those people the reason you don't like those people is because you've never met one who was awesome and that's basically it. So if you think, oh, I don't like those people, I don't like those people, I don't like those people, the reason you don't like them is because you've never met one which was awesome. And that's pretty much it. So what do you guys think? Uh, so that's what I personally believe. So you just need to meet more people. And then you would understand that person more because you'd be like, man, that guy's super cool. Why did I think those people were weird before? Boom, sorted, solved. All right, so let's see here. Personally, I believe that. Um, uh, it brings, so being nice, so being nice to everyone brings happiness, peace, and ease. Yeah, I agree with all that. Because we're all humans, yeah? Okay, so why? Uh, the question was, yeah, so again, personally, I believe that, you know, finish that part. One reason is because I need to rest. Okay, on the other one, hello. Uh, one reason is because I need to rest after all the studying I've done at college. New sentence, don't forget your period. Another reason is because I want to do something interesting this summer. Both good reasons. Only him, because you don't have the right to judge them and you are not better than them. Mm -hmm. Okay, why is everyone using because? Don't use because here, because with number nine, there's no because. So you say, I believe that we, I believe that people, I believe that you. So don't, don't use because. I don't know why everyone's using because. Don't use because. You basically say, personally, Personally, I believe that people, or we, or I, or you, you need a subject. Don't use because. And then we'll be good. JB is on it. Uh, we should be nice to others because that's how we make life work for everyone. That's true. We don't want to start fights with everyone. If we work together, life is better and there's less problems. And who wants stress? I don't want stress. I don't want to dislike. If I dislike someone and they dislike me, that's stress. And I don't like stress. I want to go to the beach and drink beer. And what's wrong with that? You know, let's be cool with everybody. Everybody just calm down and relax. Everyone's cool. He's cool. She's cool. Whatever. Everyone's cool. That's what I want to say. Uh, personally, I believe that every person is equal regardless of color, nationality, or religion. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Why not? It's uh, human, you know, it's humanism. Do you know what humanism is? Go read uh, Yuval Noah Harari, Homo Deus. Uh, also an interesting book. Uh, be nice to people and people will be nice to you. Yeah, for sure. That totally works. If you're rude to someone, they will be rude to you. So if you hate someone, they will hate you. Why would you want that? That sounds stupid. Doesn't make, it sounds counterproductive. Believe it brings equality, yeah. Personally, I believe that we share the same big values of life, so we should be nice, yeah. Yuval Noah Harari, yes. Read him, JB. If you haven't read him already, check him out. He's super good. Both books, Homo Sapiens, read Homo Sapiens first, and then after that, read Homo Deus, also awesome. Uh, personally, I believe that we are tiny creatures. No need to argue, fair enough. Uh, I believe that everybody is equal, right in the word, when you are nice with everybody, everyone will be nice with you. Yeah, I believe that as well. Okay, very nice, guys. Cool. So I think we've done this. So I hope you guys noticed that I used, we went through quite a bit today. There's a lot of words, and there's a lot of underlined words. So I'm going to teach you some new words today. But all of these words, 
And the most important thing is all of these words that I'm using today, we use in writing in English. They're called linking words, they're called connecting words, and we use them to show different things. And we're going to talk about what is the purpose of all the words we use today. And if we have time, we'll look at a few more. So today, you are going to learn a little bit about linking words for writing. So let's take a look. All right, so on your document, it's all here. Now, this one says, look at the words below. What do they mean? So let's talk about, let's look at some of these words. Drawing a conclusion. Drawing a conclusion is basically deciding the result. So for example, if you say, so I stayed home, or as a result, I stayed home. It's basically showing the result of something. Or you could also say, in conclusion, that is drawing a conclusion. So you're kind of giving a final, a final summary, or you might be showing the result of something. It rained, so I stayed home. So we would use that for drawing a conclusion. We did a little bit of that today. Uh, next one. I'm going to do these fast because, because I want you guys to uh, match these while we're doing it. Number two is giving an alternative. So you can do A or you can do B. You can do this one or you can do that one. So giving t maybe two options uh, or three options or whatever. Introducing a contrasting idea. So Canada is good, but Canada is bad. My life is great, my life is bad. I might have just given you an answer there. Are linking words and conjunctions the same thing? Not exactly. Conjunctions, they're basically the same. They have the same purpose, but usually we call linking words. We put them at the beginning of the sentence, and conjunctions would be usually in the middle of the sentence, usually. Uh, so, but they, are, they basically have the same purpose. They have the same function. They do the same things. So we have introducing a contrasting idea, good and bad, right and wrong, left and right, up and down. Adding supporting ideas, so giving more, more and more and more ideas. So this is good, you can do this and you can do that and you can also do that and you can also do that. More ideas, more ideas. Giving examples, and we did do that. We looked at a few words, like for example would be one word. Showing an opinion, we did that as well. So your personal opinion. And last one is sequencing. Uh, first, second, third, finally. Okay, so these are all the things that we looked at today. Uh, different types of words. They're all different linking words that we can use. Um, so, so let's take a look here. And you're right. Uh, I should. I should. You're right. I should that linking words and conjunctions. Sorry, yeah. So let's uh, I'll change that. Linking words. There are some conjunctions in here as well. So let's uh, let's let's do it. What is basically? Sorry, I'm moving too fast. I'll slow it down. Yes, transition words, linking words, the same. Oh, both of those are good. So really, the only question we need to know is what is the purpose of using all of those words? Why do we use all of these words? And why is that not working? And the answer is this. Pretty, pretty straightforward. So why do we use? So why do we use? Firstly, for example, um, in addition to show relationships, cohesion. Yeah. So it's to make your writing. Mm -hmm. What are those? What are those answers? Probably organization. That's one. Yeah. Make your writing organized, cohesive. Yeah. But some people don't know what does that mean. Co cohesive. More efficient. Yeah and organized and, I don't know, maybe clear. Maybe those two, organized and clear. Coherent, yes, all of those words, coherent, cohesion, all of those words also make sense as well. It's, it's basically, the, the real idea is you want, you want it really clear for your reader. Like, what, are, what am I doing? Oh, right now I'm giving my first idea, and then I say also, and I give my second idea. Or I say first, and then I say second. So it's really helping me, the reader, to understand your writing in, in a clear and organized way. And this is important. If you do IELTS, if you do FCE, if you do some kind of academic test, PTE in Australia, you need to use these words in your writing because it will help the reader to read better and it will improve your score uh, of your writing. So, uh, so what we can do, so let's match. So let's do a little matching here. Now match these ideas to the sections in the warm-up. 
So uh, let's take a look at here. So you have these options. You have all these words. Those are the words that you have to match. I gave them to you before. And I would like you to match them to the topics in, at the top. So what was number one? We said how to be lazy. And then we said, first of all, second, finally. What was the skill that we used for that? Yes, hello, I think you got it there. So how to be lazy, first of all, second, finally. What do we call that? Was it, um, was it showing opinions? Was it giving examples? Was it something else? What was the answer for that? What is the skill that we used? Time, correct. So the skill was sequencing. How did I call it here? Sequencing ideas. Sequencing ideas. There we go. So number one was sequencing ideas. First, finally, na 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 na. How about number two? So number two was, uh, what things can you do if you visit my country? One thing that you can do, also you can do this as well. What is number two? So number one was sequencing. What is number two? Uh, so if I said also. Also, also, also. But there's other ways to say also as well, right? So what was number two? It wasn't sequencing. That was done. Sequencing is like one, two, three, four, finally, something like that. What was number two? One thing that you can do also, showing opinion. No, not showing opinion. Uh, Gertie says adding information. Noir says besides, OK. Uh, supporting an idea, adding. Yes, correct. You guys got it. It was adding supporting ideas. Good. So another thing you can do, that's, that's a different, it's a different skill, right? It's, it's similar to firstly, secondly, thirdly, but it's a little different, right? Because first, second, third means there's, there's an order, one, two, three, four. You have to go one, two, three, four. But if you say also, 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 it's not, it's not always one, two, three, four. It can be one, two, three, four, but it's also different. So we can also use that one for adding supporting ideas. Okay. Okay, cool. That one's good. Next one. Uh, number three question was, what is it like being you? Well, on the one hand, being me is awesome. On the other hand, being me is not awesome. So what is that? Uh, and then there's another one. There's an example for number four. What are the advantages and disadvantages of living in your country? Living in my country is good. However, living in my country is not good. Contrast, thank you very much. Contrast, introducing a contrasting idea, good. And those are words like but and while and however, right? So there we go, contrast. Contrasting, cool, all good. Number five, what are some ways to get in shape? If you want to get in shape, you can play some sports such as, or you can also do some other physical activities like. So what are, th what are those words, um, such as and like? What's another, what, what is the purpose of using such as? What is the purpose of using like? What, what do you think it was? Mm-hmm. Is this a way to learn how to write a paragraph? Noir, this is, this is learning how to have good writing, uh, good organized writing, clear writing. So we're not really writing a paragraph today. We're just showing you all the words that you could use to improve your writing, to make it much better. Uh, okay. Yeah, examples, examples. Um, I don't think it's alternatives, because number six is alternatives. So this one was giving examples for sure. Definitely number five was giving examples. Uh, number six was definitely uh, giving an alternative. Right, because that's an easy word. Alternatively, definitely means alternative. Okay, uh, number seven. What was number seven? Uh, so number seven was what are some reasons that you need a vacation? Uh, so what was the connect what was the cohesive skill that we were doing with that one? Uh, because, because, because. And what was it? So it's not an example, it's not an alternative. It was a yeah, it was that one. 
What was this one here? Reason, yeah. And what did we say? It wasn't, no, it's not showing opinion. No, it's not cause and effect. Please use the paper. Use the paper down here. Remember all these ones, all these words here? Use one of these words because those are the words that they match to. So that one was definitely, I think we had the answer there, uh, that one was definitely giving an explanation. Explaining something. Why? Because, because, because. Explain. You're definitely explaining something. Cool. And last two, we only got two left. So number eight was what advice would you give? It was a, oh, and we never did this one, but that's fine. It was a horrible day, maybe the worst day of my life. In conclusion, was definitely, yeah, so the other one, you guys are right, totally was uh, reasons, explanation. We can also say reasons or explanation. Number eight was um, drawing a conclusion. So basically making, making a conclusion. And number nine was personal, what was it called? What did I call it? Showing opinion. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a big lesson. But anyways, these are all the words that exist. And well, and there's more. And we didn't even talk about how many more there are. I had more activities to do, but honestly, we don't have time. But if you want, you can do a little search in your own time if you're interested. Uh, so for example, what are some other linking words? Now, I've done classes on this, on this topic before. So if you want, you can probably go back and check out one of my old classes. And it's called Linking Words for Sequencing. Linking words for adding ideas and linking words for other things. Go back and check them out. I did them all together. So they're maybe uh, like one month ago, I did lots of lessons on this individually because there are more words. This is just, I showed you a few words, but there's many, many more. So if you're curious to know more, search one of these, you know, linking words for sequencing, and you'll probably get some stuff online. So let's take a look, see what happens. Bye bye, Dad Bod. Here we go. So again, and some of them are together, right? So uh, here's some more. Firstly, secondly, thirdly. And again, you can also use other words like, um, uh, yeah, so you can use also these words as well. You can use furthermore. So even though it's addition, you can also use it for sequencing. So those two can actually be used together. In addition, moreover, can be similar to sequencing. The first, the second, right? So those, those are some more. So. If you want to know more, there's tons. There's tons of stuff on the internet. Um, yeah. Linking words, see? There's a bunch more. Firstly, next. Next is another linking word. Last, finally, in addition, furthermore, another, also. OK, these are different types of linking words. They're all kind of mixed together. But we've kind of looked at the purpose of a few of them. This lesson is supposed to be, yeah, you're right, Noir. It is, a, it is supposed to be in like 10 lessons. But the purpose today was to try to give you a picture. So let's take a look at IELTS writing. And let's see. Let's see if I can find an example. So let's see. So really, if you're doing an IELTS test, or if you were doing some kind of now, if you were doing some kind of test, like an exam, you might want to look for these linking words. So if you looked at a sample answer online, you'd say, hmm, let's see, where do they have any linking words? Oh, here's one. By contrast, showing contrast. What else we got? In my experience, even in my experience is about your opinion. It's a linking word. Undoubtedly, that's a linking word. So honestly, if you go, nevertheless, there's a linking word. Boom. So actually, especially, ooh, forgot about especially. There's another one. So there's lots of linking words. And yeah, I, I agree. You cannot learn all this in one class. But I just wanted to show you that how many linking words there are. Uh, there is another one. Boom. So if you look at an essay on the internet, like an IELTS essay or any other essay, you're going to see that that essay, a good essay, has lots of linking words in it, here and here and here and here, and a different variety all the time. Uh, there are tons. There, th there are tons. Correct grammar should be there are tons. But there we go. It was just Today was just to show you how many linking words. And look, this person used a lot. They used moreover. 
Um, they used a few others. Where did they use? Uh, where else? They used such as. I saw it in here. But anyways, in conclusion, there's another linking word. But is a linking word. Moreover is a linking word. The reasons for this, those are linking words. So you can see they're everywhere. Linking words are literally everywhere in all of this writing. So start looking for those words, because if you do writing in English, or you're planning to go to university, or anything like that, or just want to be a better English speaker, we use these words all the time, especially in writing another negative result. Okay? So I just wanted to give you a bit of an introduction, because sometimes it's good to see the big picture before you start writing individually. So I think that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you had a chance to, obviously, talk about yourself. Learn how to be lazy, be an Australian koala, and also use a few linking words along the way. So yeah, it makes your writing better. Boom, and that's about it. So I think that's it for me. I'm out of here. I will see you all your lovely texts and emojis tomorrow. Uh, what is the difference between moreover and furthermore? Nothing, Leon. They're exactly the same. Okay? Peace out, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and we'll see you tomorrow. Same smart time, same smart place. Have a great day. Big kiss, big hug. Be nice to everyone because it's cool to be nice. Bye-bye, everybody. Breathing hardly, bed called me, playing freaky, and let's chase some butterflies down in the park. You love me like you did in the past Go crazy, embrace it No rules, no, my tempo All I wanna do is you now You're shaking my mind to the wild I'm gonna